Hey there, and thank you so much for joining me for another video. My name is Erin Eno, and today I'm going to show you how to paint this fun Valentine's Day card with foil mylar balloon hearts. I'm going to simplify it by breaking it down into the four basic elements that I feel are needed to make these look like foil balloons. So let's just jump in and get started. So I'll just run through my materials for you. I'm using Bao Hong Academy Cold Press Watercolor Paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I have my Van Gogh paints. I have a jar of water and a paper towel. And I have three brushes I'm using today. I have my um, Curry's series, uh, 2500 series brush in a size 10 round. And I have two of my Princeton Snap brushes, one in a size four round and one in a size zero. You will need uh, some small brushes for this because this is not a huge painting and you will also need a white gel pen or you can use white gouache if you've got a good pointed brush and a steady hand because we're just going to be doing some lettering with that. I also have a blank craft card. I just got this off of Amazon. I have white and craft. I'm using craft for this one today. If you don't have these you can just make your own out of Bristol board or something or you can even just double the size of your paper and fold that in half and that whole painting can be your card. I just don't like to do that because I don't like to waste the paper if I don't have to. So I have trimmed this down to be um, a quarter of an inch shorter and narrower than my card front so I will end up with a uh, one eighth of an inch border all the way around once I glue it down. Okay, so let's just jump in and start drawing. Oh, sorry, you will also need a pencil and an eraser. Yeah, that wasn't smart. Un momento. Okay, I've got my pencil and eraser now. So I'm just going to do three heart balloons and I'm going to see if I can get them as symmetrical as I can because I'm not the best at that. So we'll see how I make out. Okay, so I tried to draw the hearts separately and it was a big fail. So I'm going to draw just one heart. And I'm going, going to make a template that I can trace around and that'll be a lot, a lot easier. Okay, I think that's much better. I'm not gonna make them so pointy on the bottom. I'll round that out when I'm done tracing them. Okay, so we have our, oh, that didn't, didn't even show up for some strange reason. There we go. Oh, my lead's worn down, that's why. Pay attention, Erin. Okay, so there's our three hearts. I'm gonna do them a little rounder at the bottom because I don't think balloons would be that pointy. And that's it. So now I'm gonna lighten the lines with my kneaded eraser and then we can start painting our balloons. So now our lines have been lightened so we can get painting. Now, I have looked at a lot of images of foil mylar balloons and rather than just pick one and try to replicate it. I've just pulled out the four main features that I found on all of them and that's what we're going to include on our balloons and go from there. So what I've noticed is that they all have one sharp bright highlight, um, some medium tone highlights, some shading and some wrinkles. So those are the four features that we need to put on each of our hearts. So just to start I'm just going to put a white a white? No, I'm going to put a light wash of carmine on each of the hearts. And when I do this, I'm going to leave one bright kind of severe highlight on each of the hearts. So I'm just going to use my number 10 to do the initial wash. Okay. 
And whoops, I'm just going to turn my board so I can get the curves a little easier. Now when I do this first wash, I'm going to leave the main bright highlight and it's going to be over here. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, ugh. so I'm just going to mark the outline of the highlight and it can have some curves just like that. Now when I put this highlight on the other hearts, it can be roughly in the same spot, but it doesn't have to be exact. In fact, it shouldn't be exact because we're going to assume that each balloon is um, a little different position wise, like it could be curved a little more so that reflection is going to change but it's going to basically be in the same spot so i hope that makes sense now this highlight can have a harsh edge or should have a fairly harsh edge but i can soften it just a little bit i'm also going to well, i'm also going to put in just a little doohickey at the bottom where you blow the balloons up. We can play with that a little later if we need to. So I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and I'm just going to soften this just slightly. And you can see I'm getting water blooms because I had a little too much water on my brush but it's no big deal. We'll be going over the whole balloon with darker shades anyway. So I'm not going to freak out about that. Okay, so just like that. And then I'll speed it up and do the other two hearts. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to speed up the drying with my uh, heat tool because these need to be perfectly dry before we put on the next layer. Okay, so the washi tape that I have does not hold up to the heat tool at all. So I'm putting some painter's tape on there instead. Now we can do the second layer and the second layer is just going to be red. I'm using carmine. I don't know... Um, what red would be equivalent to that. It's the only pure red that I have, so just use whatever red you like. And this is gonna be a heavier layer, but we're going to make sure that we keep some mid-tone highlights in there. So I'm going to try to just lay it all down and then lift the highlights out with my brush, and hopefully that will work for us. So now I'm going to rinse my brush off. I'm going to tap it off on my paper towel and I'm going to go in and lift a highlight up here that follows the curve of the heart. So I'm adding water to push that pigment away. not a ton of it, and then just pushing down to lift that up. Okay, just like that. Hopefully that will be light enough for us. And then I'm going to do the same thing actually all along this side edge just to create a highlight going up the side it doesn't have to <coughs> excuse me this highlight doesn't have to be really strong 
but I just want it to be a little bit lighter. Just like that. Then a stronger but still soft highlight just to the side of that. So I'm adding a bit of water just to kind of loosen it up. And then I'm going to pick it up. To make it more prominent. I'm going to add a little more water. It's not lifting as much as I would like, so I'm adding water and I'm going to scrub at it a little bit. Now, if you're using non cotton paper, it will lift a lot easier, but it will also get disturbed a lot easier if you go on top of it too much, if you work it too much. So be careful of that. So when we put shadows in, those highlights will pop out a little more. And I will do the same to the other balloons. And again, I'll fast forward it so you don't have to sit through it but you'll still be able to see the, the process. So now we have those highlights done and I think I will go in with my number four and just go in with the damp brush. So I'm just, I'm just cleaning clean. it off, tapping it off on my paper towel and I'm just going to soften this up just the slightest amount. So I still want it kind of crisp but not perfectly harsh. Okay, and then I can just blend this in a little bit just to make it a little on the pink side, just ever so slightly because I can always go in and add more to it later if I want to, but it just make it just a little less crisp. Just tones it down a little bit. Now I'm going to dry this completely with my heat tool and we'll come back and we'll add some shading. Okay, so now that those are dry, I want to make sure they're perfectly dry because I don't want to lift that pigment when we go over it with the shadows. Okay, so I'm just going to put a whack of Payne's Gray in my palette here and I'm just going to add a little bit at a time to my red. Actually, I think I overdid that. That's a lot of a lot of Payne's Gray. Okay, so that's way too dark. My mistake. I'm gonna go in and add more of the Carmine to make it not so crazy dark. Okay. You can well actually now I've gone the other way. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my number four, I think. Um, yeah, I'm going to use my number four so I don't get a lot of water. Okay, so I'm just going in with a little bit of a wash. It's still fairly dark. And I am going to 
do a shadow with a harsh edge on the right side, starting at the bottom. Okay, and I'm just gonna come up and it can be kind of wiggly because it's gonna follow the crinkles of the balloon, if that makes sense. Okay. And then what I'm going to do when I get to the top and that other highlight, I'm just gonna put a line of it in here. Just like that. And then I'm gonna rinse off my brush, tap it off on my paper towel, and I'm just going to bleed it out, which is why I wanted the color underneath perfectly dry because I wanna make sure I'm not moving that color around underneath or we'll get some weird kind of funky marks. Okay, just like that. I can even afford to be a little darker. Okay, so you really want to use a small brush here because you don't want this just to get saturated with water. And when you're moving this paint around, when you're blending it out, make sure you keep tapping it off on your paper towel to get rid of that excess pigment that you've picked up on your brush. So just like that, that ought to be fine. Maybe blend this out just a titch more. And then we're going to put a highlight or shadows up here and we're going to soften them as they go around these two highlights. Okay, but it's going to cover a lot of the heart at the bottom down here and it can have a pretty harsh edge at this point of it, at this side of it rather. Okay, and then I'm going to blend it up and around that highlight. And on the other side of this highlight, and it can be wiggly. In fact, it should be kind of wiggly to follow those wrinkles that we're going to put in later. And we can keep a harsher edge on this side and then soften it up as it gets into that other highlight. Then we're gonna put some shading up here as well. Just like that. And then this can be bumpy too, because everything's kind of gonna follow the contour of those wrinkles that we're going to put in later. Okay, but this is gonna all blend out. So I'm gonna rinse off my brush tap it off on my paper towel and blend this out into the highlight. Blend it out into the rest of the red. and blend it out into the top highlight. So we're just softening that up. Now we want a harsh edge here, but you can just Soften it ever so slightly. And soften this one into that highlight. And I'm just gonna put a bit more here. And blend this out. Okay, so you have to be careful not to overwork it or it will start to go kind of patchy on you. And we don't want that. I'm just gonna soften this up just a little bit. OK, 
okay and then we're going to do the rest do the rest no we're not going to do the rest we're going to do the same to the other two but i'll speed it up again Okay, so now that we have that layer down, I'm going to dry that. Okay, so now that that's dry, the last step in making these look like mylar balloons are all the wrinkles that they have around. So the seam here around the entire heart um, creates these little kind of bumps on the outside, on the outside edges. So I'm going to mix up some deeper red Okay, and we'll do some red, some even black because the shadow makes them very dark. And I don't want to use my number four brush. I'm gonna to switch to my zero because I do not want a lot of water to do this. Okay, so what you want to do is just make really fine kind of bumpy edges. So you're just kind of tapping it in just with the tip of your brush. You don't have to do them everywhere, but just enough that it starts to look like the wrinkles on the seam. And they do go all around the balloon. So I will speed this up for you, but I just want to note that as I get to the other side, I'm going to add some Payne's Gray, make them that much darker. So now I'm just taking a damp brush and just kind of softening the inside edge of those bumps. That way you can just make them look a little smaller if they got away from you, which I feel like some of these did. Just like that.
Okay, so there are our wrinkles for the seam. I went a little, out a little far there, but no biggie. I'm not freaked out about it. And I'll continue to do the same thing with the other two balloons. Okay, so now that those are in place, I just want to try to soften this one edge a little bit. There we go. I want it harsh, but maybe not quite that harsh. Same with this guy over here. Okay, so now that that's done, we can put some wrinkles in. So again, I'm gonna take my number zero. Now I'm just gonna start off with a few and see how it is. I don't wanna go crazy. Okay, we're gonna start with this edge here and we'll do a couple that come right from the edge and then the rest will be further in to the balloon. So I just want the slightest line so I'm just with a very light pressure like that. Okay, and then between those, I'm going to add a few more lines going into that highlight. So we'll do another one that goes right in and then a few more into that highlight, just like that. Now they should dry a little lighter and then we'll do some on the top highlight. Just very light pressure. You don't want to overdo it. And we don't need to put them everywhere. We'll put some in, like I say, and just see if that gives the effect of the balloon enough rather than overdoing it couple down here. And then some on the other side. These ones we may need to darken up a bit because they're going into a shadow area. Maybe some down here. And you're kind of curving them to follow like the puffiness of the balloon. Okay, just like that. I'm thinking these ones are a little heavy. I'm just gonna see if I can add some water to them and lift them up a bit. There, that's better. They were a little too dark. Okay, now we'll add some to the rest of the balloons. So now the lines are in and I'm going to go in with the red and just darken up some of the, the wrinkles that are in the shadow just so they show up a little better. And I want to be careful that I don't overdo it. So just, just where it's really dark, just going to add a few like here where you can hardly see them. There would be some highlight curves as well, but I don't want to get into yet another layer. Okay, there's our wrinkles on our Mylar balloon. And again, I think these guys are just a little too heavy again. So I'm going to 
do the same thing, tap some of it up. Just tap the water on it. If you have to do this, don't move it around or you'll disturb the paint and it will just blend into a mushy mess. So the only thing I think I want to adjust is this highlight. I'm just gonna soften up the edges a bit more and bring a little bit of that pigment in. So I'm just kind of, sh well, I'm shaking my table, but I'm just kind of dragging that in with a damp brush. I think that's pretty decent. Now we're gonna put some ribbons on. So I'm going to get my number four brush and I just want the straight carmine for this to start and just with the tip of my brush I'm just going to do a wash of some curly Q ribbons. Just like that. I'm actually going to lift this up now. Okay, and then I'm going to take the carmine and just tap it in some of the places where I think they would be the back. Actually, I'm just going to tap it in and leave some highlights. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about what's curled under what. even just go in and pick up some of the pigment with a paper towel just to kind of give it some highlights like that. Maybe some there and I'll do the rest of the balloons. So now that that's done, we have to wait till they completely dry and then we can do the lettering. Okay, but so now that this is completely dry, we're going to take our gel pen and I'm just going to actually pencil the letters in with pencil first, just so I can be sure. Actually, I can't even see that, so I'm just going to go in and do the eye because the eye is the easiest. It's right down the middle of the balloon. Okay, so now the lettering's done. I'm going to take the tape off, attach it to my blank card stock, and you will see what we have. And there you go. There is our finished card. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit the like button and also subscribe for more if you haven't already. That's it for today, guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon.